Hey everybody, this is Jeremy with ZTP Mag. I'm here with Edsel Dope of Dope. How you doing, Edsel? Good, man. How you doing? Pretty good, pretty good. Thanks for uh, coming down and sharing the afternoon with us, talking some shit. I wouldn't have it any other way, man. I've been listening to you guys since, uh, not to date you, but hell, high school. Um, You're dating yourself. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, I'm 34, man. I've been, uh, you know, jamming to you guys for a long, long time, and... Uh, you guys have what I call mood music, you know. Um, when I'm in a mood, when I'm angry, I'll roll down the windows and just crank, you like know, it. something. Um, if I'm in a really good mood and I want to cruise campus, I'll crank Debonair, you know, something like that. You got uh, a different song. Man. Yeah, you got a different yeah. song for, for everything. Yeah, so what – you got the whole band back together. What's going on with that? Um. It's cool, man. I mean, you know, I uh, dope's lineups are like a fraternity, man. Like if you notice, we've had a different lineup for every single album. Um, you know, it, it, over the years, it was done, you know, for creative purposes or sometimes personal, sometimes scheduling. Um, but at the end of the day, um, now that the band's been around for a really long time, it's it's worked to a tremendous benefit for me because now I have this fraternity of dudes that know the gig, know the songs, know the, the you know what's expected live, um, have the look, we have the personal relationship. So at any given time, based on what I'm putting together, I'm able to reach out to a bunch of guys that fit the bill and put a lineup together. And I feel like, you know, I always feel a solid team. You know, I don't feel like I've ever put a band on stage that didn't represent dope in a very positive manner and, and give the fans a great show. Um, <clears throat> we've been going to Russia pretty regularly over the last few years. And last year we got an, another opportunity to go to Russia. And I sent out my, my emails and my text messages to my fraternity brothers trying to figure out who was available because, you know, a lot of these guys have other gigs and, and families and all that stuff. So, you know, every time the phone rings for me isn't like they drop their whole life. Um, and the responses that I got back, I kind of looked through and I was like, oh, cool, AC's in, Virus in, Racy's in. Wait a minute. I've played with AC in the last few years. I've played with Virus in the last few years. It's been a while since I played with AC, but... How long has it been since all four of us played together? And I had to kind of scratch my head and sit, called them up and was like, do you remember? And we realized that these four dudes haven't played together in like 12 years. So um, that was kind of exciting. Um, so everybody locked in the Russia thing. And as the anticipation of that got greater, I decided that I wanted to, to record a live record because we'd never done that. And, and Russia is a really great place for us and makes a cool story, too, to like record your live album in Russia. Right. So we did that. And then um, and then, you know, while we were in Russia, I asked everybody to look at their calendars and everybody was free to, to do an actual full U.S. tour. So we started uh, putting that in motion, and that kind of gave me the final kick in the ass to to have a commitment to a tour, which gave me another reason to finish up the first volume of Blood Money so that uh, while we were doing this tour, we could be talking about a record to come. So um, it's really business as usual for me. It's just kind of an exclamation point. Uh, to have this old school reunion line up together to do this old school tour, which has been exciting for the fans. And for us, it's cool, too, because, you know, each group of guys that you tour with, you have your own verbiage and you have your own inside jokes and your own stories and memories of, you know, when when I was in Cleveland with this lineup, it's, oh, you remember this. But with these guys, it's more of, you know, going even farther back. And, and it, it just makes for a lot of fun and, and just good, you know, good camaraderie and uh it's it's been a really good time it's also the first time that dope as an entity has done a full u.s tour since we released no regrets seven years ago and toured with black label society right. so i think that you know it's just the 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 realization that the band is re-entering the touring and the marketplace for real after seven years of sort of doing little regional dates here and there and not having a commitment to a record and a release date, just kind of, you know, half, half assing the, the commitment to the band, you know, just weekend warrior dates and little, you know, little runs here and there. But this is a, a bigger step for us with a new album, a full U.S. tour, 
the reunion lineup as the exclamation point. It's just with a, a society now that's built on Facebook news feeds, information gets by you really quick. Right. I think there's a lot more awareness around what we're doing because there's a lot more happening with yeah. the band right now. So that's been a really good feeling because the turnouts have been really great. The shows have been really great. And you can you can feel the love from the fans that are excited that the band is is back on a on a greater scale than we have been in the last seven years or so. Right. So can you tell everybody what goes into um, you know what goes into putting a, a whole tour together like time wise? I mean, you got uh, writing for the for the record, you got setting everything up, and then actually touring, and then you got maybe you might do other legs and stuff like that. So like from beginning to end, what what kind of time do you put in with that? Well, I mean, you know, I, you got to separate a record from that because, you know, you can make records quickly or you can make records as this, you know, Blood Money record took a, quite a long time. But it wasn't so much that the record took a long time because the record didn't come together. It was more just I had a lot of other stuff going on in my life. And um, personally, I, I wasn't capable of of doing the things necessary to support the record. Um, you know, I had to kind of pump the brakes for a minute after 12 years of constant touring and releasing albums. Um, but if you remove the record part of it, you know, putting together a tour starts with committing the time and, and talking to your agent and saying this block of time, we would like to go out and do dates. And then the agent starts to go out there and figure out the routing and where there's the most interest. And then once I have that solidified, then I reach out to my group of guys, figure out who the team's going to be. And then you got to figure out who your crew's going to be. And then you got to figure out what songs you're going to play, and you know make sure everybody's tight on that. And um, we don't live in the same town, so we're you know we're not having consistent rehearsals. So everybody's got to be a pro and get their parts down. And then we'll get together for a few days before the tour and run through the set a bunch of times to make sure we're solid. And then, you know, the social media marketing and all the stuff that goes into it, um, you know, it's it's all that stuff. And then, then you hit the road, you, you know, and get a tour bus and a crew. And there's a lot that goes into it, but... Countless people, too. Yeah, man, you know, it's, it's, a big, it's a big thing. But, I don't know, it's another day at the office for me. I've been doing this so long, I just, you know, I just do it. Right. So, um, hold on, man. That's... Uh it's it's I hate to say typical dope, but it's the dope sound. But some of the leads on there are, are absolutely phenomenal. It kind of blew me away. What what, what led you guys to pick uh, Hold On for your single? Um, you know, I, I handed in a handful of songs to the label that I thought were appropriate. Um, you know, record labels these days are less important than they used to be. Right. Um, I wanted the label to feel some accountability because that's really the place where the label is going to be the most felt is how they're able to go out there and work radio and work a single and those kinds of things because the album and the touring and those things, you know, we have a connectivity to our fans. We've been around a long time. That stuff's going to kind of work itself. The fans are going to have their ear to the street. They're going to find it. Um, so a single is supposed to kind of go out there and reach more people. Um, I really left it up to the label. I was like, here's the songs that, you know, we, we would be comfortable with, and you guys got to have some accountability here, so you tell me which song you feel like you guys will have the most success with, and Hold On was the one that they came back with, and I certainly didn't fight it because I love the song. I think it's a great representation of what we do, um, and that was that. Um, but, uh, but, yeah, to me, you know, it picks up right where No Regrets left off. It fits in with songs like Best For Me or My Funeral, um, you know, and again, the band having a very wide sound, um, we always have. I mean, you can right. go back to every record that we've done. You know, the first album had Pig Society and had You Spin Me Round. Right. Second album had Die Motherfucker Die and had Now or Never and What yeah. About and With or Without You. And then the third record had songs like Bitch and Burn and had songs like Another Day Goes By and Sing. American Apathy had the single Always. Uh, and again, back to No Regrets, it had My Funeral and Best For Me and um addiction but also had violence and 666 right. so you know to me this is par for the course it's what dope does we we have we have what i call our middle finger songs and then we have our songs that are written a little bit more from the heart um i've never shied away from that it's to me as an artist i feel like uh that's what i have to do like i don't experience one series of emotions 
that makes me feel like, well, my band's a metal band, so everything's got to be like this. Well, if that's how you write and that's how you approach your art, well, to me, that's the ultimate form of selling out because that means that you're doing what you think you're supposed to do for your sound of your band to be in this box. For me, the sound of my band is what's here and what I'm feeling. And um, sometimes I'm feeling as if I'm being very outward and I'm looking at the world and I'm and I'm and I'm coming at it from a very outward perspective and that's how some songs like die motherfucker die and those get written um, other times I look more inward because I'm going through stuff in my life that you know the music is helping me express and get through um, this album because it takes place at a time where I was going through a lot of stuff might be a little bit more of an inward looking album um, and that's cool. And, I, you know, again, that's that's what I have to do. I have to do what's true to me and what feels right with where I'm at in my life. Um, and I'll continue to make records like that. So, again, it's, it's a very broad record. It's got a lot of middle fingers, but it's also got a lot of heart, maybe a little more heart than middle fingers on part one. Right. Uh, we'll see where part two goes and what happens beyond. But, you know, it's just what we do. It's what we've always done. It doesn't feel any different to me. So... Uh Sometimes I wonder, you, you, you're able to, I mean, album after album, pull out tracks that uh, just reach in your head and they just stick there. Um, did you, like, take over for uh, Vi after he sold his soul and got beat by the Karate Kid? Did you sell your soul to the devil for, uh, you know, uh, tracks that are just fucking damn good every album, man? I mean, um, I don't know. Well, I appreciate creatively, what, I mean, do you ever have trouble or does it just kind of flow out of you i don't know man i mean creatively not really i feel like i always got something there um i mean i i I hold myself to a pretty high standard as far as songs um you know i think hooks are very important hooks have always been a big part of what i try to do if if it doesn't have a big chorus it's not memorable it's not probably not going to make a record of mine um so that you know for whatever that's worth um but uh, I think on this record, I got a, even a little bit more experimental with, um, like, in the past and, and as a whole, pop songs and, and, and hooky songs are generally shorter. Right. They're kind of shortened to the point, and that's been a big calling card for me through the years. On this record, I got a little bit... I, I kind of let myself out of that a little bit, like with a track like Blood Money that's, you know, four and a half minutes long, and it's got additional parts like the breakdown is a little different right. like you know I've, I've kind of expanded on that stuff a little bit just because it felt right um but uh yeah i don't know man I just just do what i do uh, again chorus hooks have always been very important to me i think parts that repeat that are memorable that's what makes a good song right. it's hard for me to connect with with some styles of heavy music because i don't hear the hook yeah. and maybe it's that's really the problem with uh, progressive yeah, it just doesn't work for me. But again, music is all subjective. It's all opinion. There is no right or wrong. It's whatever a certain person likes. I do what I like and what I think is cool. If it works for the listener, great. If it doesn't, can you change the channel? That's the beauty of it, you know. Um, it, it, you know, the the funny shit to me is the people that feel the need to to hate on anything when it's art. It's right. like. You know, it's so stupid. Like, I would never say that I think something sucks or somebody's terrible because they're they're artists. Like, they're you also understand the work that goes into no matter what uh, artist they are, the amount of work that it goes into being that artist. Especially if you're actually putting yourself out there and you're actually doing something. Like, if you're if you're making that effort and that attempt and you're you know, you're not phoning it in and you're not just pretending, but this is what you do. I mean, you got to respect that. And if you don't, then you're probably one of those people that's never done anything. And, and maybe you're bitter because you never did anything. But, um, but yeah, the internet trolls that just sit around and hate on shit, it's hard to, to even understand the mindset because, you know, for me to win in this business, nobody has to lose. Like, right. this isn't a football yeah, exactly. game. It's not like, you know, I love the you know my team and my team's going to play your team and my team's going to beat your team all right that i can understand that kind of a rivalry because there is a winner and a loser and how many games my team wins affects your team's ability to go to the playoffs and i get that but this is music it's art it's not competition like i can't imagine john lennon sitting around and like 
wanting to bash on Jimi Hendrix because he, you know, it makes him feel better about himself. He's too busy being John Lennon and just writing what he thinks is right. And Jimi Hendrix is too busy lighting his guitars on fire and just being like, yo, man, I'm just doing what I do. So the people that sit around and just throw rocks, it's clearly it represents something wrong with themselves um, because that's what they need to do to feel better or to feel more intelligent or feel like, you know, they have a voice that they can cast a stone at somebody for, you know, this ability to uh, judge things through uh, their eyes that they think everyone else should value. But it's quite silly to me, and it really just perpetuates negative thought and, and hate, which I don't understand any of that shit. It's just, it's just dumb, man. I'm just an artist doing what I do. Hope you like it. If you don't, that's cool. But, um, but yeah, I don't get it. So what's uh, what's a guilty pleasure for you? Um, you know, I don't know, man. The older I've gotten, the less of those I seem to have. Um, really, my my favorite thing in the world is is the blue water in the Caribbean, man. Like any time I can get out and I have any time whatsoever, that's what I do. I hop a plane down to the Caribbean and I stick my toes in some white sand and I look at some water that looks like Windex, there you go. and just and just detach from everything. Um, I'm really, it's, you know, the social media age is, is sort of hard for me to deal with as an artist, uh, honestly. Um, I like the days where I make records and people like yourselves listen to those records and kind of review those records and then come out and meet the band and pass the news on through your filter. Um, now that, you know, I'm expected to post on a regular basis what I'm doing and what's going it's like I'm my own promotional machine right. and you know if there's ever been a time where I've you know thought maybe I had an ego or I was a little narcissistic I've really proven to myself over the last couple of years that I'm as far away from a narcissist as you can be because I can't do it like I, I don't think it's important enough what I had for breakfast to take a picture of it and share it with the world and it's really hard for me to comprehend how people do think that that is news right. oh, yeah. so everybody's got their own tv channel now it's just their facebook or their instagram and and how they choose to express what's important to them through that is their own choice and everybody can do what they want but for me it's really hard to to value my own everyday experiences as being that interesting that you know people tell me all the time man if you posted more if you did this more you know you'd have more followers right. and you'd have more of an impact and i'm like i'm a fucking artist man i'm not here to share like my personal life and every everything that i do on a daily basis and if that's what i have to be to be a successful artist well maybe i'm i'm not going to be as successful as i could be and i'm okay with that right. it's just you know I, that's a tough one for me like i liked you know, again, you either adapt or you die, and I feel like I've clearly adapted enough. I mean, my first record came out on cassette, and I'm still standing here this far later, you know. Right. But, um, but yeah, man, I'm, I'm not into the narcissistic society that we're building. I'm not into the kids these days thinking that how many likes their pictures get, you know, is relevant to how many friends they have or how important they are. It's like, it's not good for us, man. It's, it's too soulless, and it's too... It's too it lacks connectivity on a human level. Um, I don't like it at all. I don't think it's good for us as people. I feel like, you know, there's a fun fun meme out there that's like, you know, where are we all going to go tonight and stare at our phones? Because that's all that anyone does. Like, you get a, a group of people in social situations and they can't get away from the screen to right. look at one another. Right. I mean, I've sat in a room and I've watched people text each other in the same friggin' room. It's like, dude. And then take pictures yeah, man. So again, like, who, I'm not judging. I'm just expressing my perception and my 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 experiences. It's it's just it's 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 kind of bizarre. I miss the slower time. Yeah. That's what the Caribbean does for me. I get to get on a plane and I go somewhere where people aren't staring at their phones all the time and they're they're soaking in the moment. And you know, you meet people from all over the world that are that are there for the same reason and you have a beer and you talk and you share and it's just a lot more of a human experience. I miss the human experience. It's, it's a, everything has become so single serving almost down to the, you know, the, it's funny. I feel like the movie fight club was like a step ahead right. 
Right. You know, it's like back then it wasn't like you listen to some of the dialogue in that film and you think that it was representative of like our culture in 1999. But God, it's so it's relevant like, yeah, it's now. Worse. It's so much worse now. So. So tell everybody about Blood Money when's it come out and then uh, finish off with uh, where they can find you. Uh, Blood Money's October 28th. You can pre-order it now at dopetheband.com or at Pledge Music. Um, the uh, if you want to find the band, it's everything is really our tags are Dope the Band. So it's Facebook.com/slash Dope the Band, Instagram Dope the Band, or if you want to follow me, it's Edsel Dope. But you're gonna be disappointed because I don't post that often. Um, and uh, and that's that's it, man. Like we're just you know slinging our our new music out there, our new music videos. I'm a big video guy. I'm all about you know lots of visual elements to go along with it. The actual record itself is a pretty sick big fold out digi pack with lots of cool stuff in it. Um, I've already released three music videos for the record. That's not even out yet. We got another one coming out here pretty soon. So I'm I've always been big at you know that supportive visual content that helps people to to absorb things even better um and uh we'll be on tour for the rest of till halloween then we go over to russia and europe and the uk and do some stuff and um yeah man that's it and we'll see what 2017 holds i'm sure that you know i like the idea of the record coming out and then the fans getting to live with it for a little while and then we'll do a tour in 17 that supports the record because this tour is more about the old school stuff um, I like the idea that the fans will get to absorb the record and, you know, live with it for a few months before we do another tour. But uh, right now, no plans to report. Just going to finish this tour up, let the album come out, and then figure out what's next. I appreciate it, man. I appreciate you. Thanks for coming out.